Doug is, he's an interesting guy. I met him at, at uh, state convention. Um, he is, some interesting things about him. He is our outreach director for the NRA. And uh, he's also on President Trump's Hispanic Leadership Coalition team. So he, uh, he meets with the Donald and as of yet he hasn't heard the words you're fired. So uh, <laughs> with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and let him share with you about the NRA, what's going on. How are you guys doing? Uh, first of all, uh, uh, I want to recognize, uh, can the military and law enforcement stand up for me? Can you in the military and the law enforcement stand up? You guys, uh, because of what you did, we're capable of sitting here talking this discussion. I never want us to forget that. You're the line that keeps us in the conversation. Thank you for that. Uh, you know, uh, Don's kind of worried about the weather and tendons. And I, I always think that I'm a, I'm a believer, I'm a believer, and I think God uses small numbers to make big impacts. He never uses big numbers because I think big numbers, people actually think they get credit for it. The small numbers have always in history made big impacts. So I appreciate the, your efforts here. And, and I know it's hard on a Saturday. Uh, I was given a speech this morning at church at the men's group on uh, God and politics. I'm going to give this speech, and then I'm going to go home and work cattle because hopefully it's not raining, and I can actually do that and cut some hay maybe this week. So uh, only in Texas can you get up here and say that. I mean, isn't that amazing? That's only in Texas. Um, I'm on the outreach committee for the NRA, which is basically the engagement committee. And one of my jobs is to go out there and talk to the NRA, especially the board, about the opportunities of expanding the base of the NRA. I want to tell you a story about how I got on the NRA. Uh, during the convention back in 2016, I was approached, uh, I ran for national committee man, I was approached by the Black Mayors Association. And they came to me and they called me and they said, Rick, uh, we know you know people, could you introduce us to the NRA? Right? And I said, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not black. And uh, I'm not a member of the NRA. And they go, you're the only one that returned our phone call. And I thought, how tragic that the Black Mayors Association wants to engage the NRA and nobody had returned the phone call. I said, we gotta do something about that. And I said, I called uh, Millie. Millie is this short woman that is the most powerful gun proactivist you'll ever meet in your life. She's one, Millie Hollow is a wonderful lady. She got me in touch with Wayne. We met at a convention and we, they brokered a deal to engage the Black Mayors Association. And it was a great deal. And I thought it was over. And uh, Wayne pulled me aside and he goes, Rick, can you help us with this? I said, he said, Wayne, tell me what you need. He goes, well, we just need to broaden our message. We need help. I said, I said, you don't need to broaden your message. You just need to go out and engage. And they go, well, what do you mean? I said, listen, I said, I'm a hunter. My son's here with me. We hunt every year. I hunt Neil Guy Elk. I said, in the fall, you know, you can't throw a rock without hitting a Hispanic with a gun <laughs> in South Texas, right? These are your NRA members. But I would tell you, they have no idea who you are. We need to go out and do that. And so, with that, Wayne engaged me. You know, never speak till you're ready to do something. And I've been on the NRA outreach committee for two years. I'm a life member. They've asked me, the, the nominations committee has asked me for the, to run for the board. So, if you're a life member, I'd love your support. But I begin with that because I want you to know that the NRA is more than just a gun rights advocate. They're more than that. They are firearms training, Recreational shooting, national carry guard insurance, museum history, hunting, law enforcement, military support, competitive shooting. And I, I'm missing probably two-thirds of this. The NRA is so much more than what you think, and, and we need to be able to be aware of that. And we want to promote that. But the other thing that I want you to talk about is their fight on a legislative side. So let me give you a little update. There are about 65 to 75 competitive house seats right now, right, that are in play. There are about six to seven governor races that are in play right now. And basically, most of the anti-gun funding that's occurring right now is by Bloomberg, okay? I would say Bloomberg is the number one source of the anti-gun funding. And the reason he's doing this is he wants to run for president, right? So we're at a very big nexus where there is a huge impact to make influential races go our way. 65 to 75 competitive congressional races, right? 
in six to seven governor races, not to mention they're all going to take a shot in 2020 at the presidency. Right now, just, just released yesterday was the political victory fund ratings for the NRA, which basically rates all our candidates. If you want to see what your candidate, how it rates in regards to the NRA, it's on the, it's on the website currently right now. The Senate is looking good, by the way. We thank God for that. And can we just get an applause for our Supreme Court? Thank you. You know, um, Gorsuch was a battle. That was a battle. But Kavanaugh was just a war. It was a war. It was no longer anything but about politics of personal destruction. And the fight, and, and you guys saw this unfold, and I, I haven't met Judge Kavanaugh, Justice Judge Kavanaugh, but uh, I would tell you, the scrutiny and the demand that that man went through was tremendous. It inspired me. When I thought I was tired, when I thought, okay, I've done too much, uh, I've done too much, I'm, I'm ready to move on, I'm ready to quit, thank you. I said, uh, I looked at what he did, and when he gave that speech to the Senate, and he said, you won't shoo me away. You won't scare me away. I'm here. Did that not just give you goosebumps? Wasn't that amazing? amazing? I want you to know, President Clinton was not far from being reality. We are on the verge of making a monumental shift in our country. The swamp is being drained. And you can hear it because the screams are loud. They are loud, and they don't want to go. And they are using everything they can. Judge Cav uh, Judge uh, Justice Kavanaugh's fight was just indicative of what happens every day. And it got on full display. It awoken, in my mind, the middle. We need to take advantage of it. We have to take advantage of it. We don't take advantage of that momentum. I, you know, God couldn't have set that Supreme Court nomination at any perfect time than right before the November election. He could have never done it. It awoken so many people to the tragedy of what the Democrats have been doing to us, which is just politics of personal destruction. We can't win in ideas, right? So let me just destroy the individual. And that's got to stop. So the Senate has been great. 60 federal judges have been nominated. Um, the number one focus of the NRA, as far as on a national basis, is national reciprocity, right? Getting a reciprocity agreement among the states, that's gonna be a big deal. The other thing I want you guys to know about is the School Shield Safety Assessment Program, okay? How many are aware of the School Shield Safety Assessment Program? Okay, well, that, that's, a, that's a challenge. NRA has instituted for free the ability to assess schools, safety, security. And they just gave about $600,000, the endowment gave $600,000 program to come assess your school for any threats, for any active shooter threats, which is a major issue, right? Because one of the biggest components of the other side is fear, right? They use fear. They constantly harp on fear, right? We're the only ones that get indicted for a crime we never committed at the NRA. We, it, 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 it's, it, it's a remarkable thing. So we have to take the proactive approach to say we do care about our kids. We care about them so much so that we're willing to do whatever it takes to make sure they're protected. And so School Shape is a great program. The goal is to double from 6 million members to 12, member, 12 million members. So that's where I come in, right? How do you double 6 million to 12 million? How do we go to, how do we go to the legislature or the state or the, uh, the Congress and do that? The only way we do that, the only way we do that is by engaging the population. Engaging people who aren't here. My biggest thing is I tell people, if this rally doesn't look like our grocery store, we got a problem. We have to engage. I want you to take people that you would never, ever think. Invite them to a gun show. Invite them to a competitive shooting competition. Right? Take them out shooting. Take them out hunting. Take kids. Uh, we have a program uh, next week. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Next month, we have a Youth for Christ program that comes out to our ranch. And these are juvenile felons, okay? Incarcerated felons, they're all juveniles. They've come, they're coming out to the ranch, and we're gonna teach them about shooting. We're gonna talk about safety, we're gonna talk about hunting and the positive aspects, right? We have to grow our base.
we have to go outside ourselves. We have to go outside our comfort zone. If we don't, we're going to lose this battle. We are going to lose our Second Amendment rights based on the fact that we will be weathered away slowly. The number one challenge that we have as defenders of the Second Amendment is to awaken those and invite those to join the fight for us. Period. Politics is a reactive sport. It's not a proactive sport, it's a reactive sport. And the only two things that count in politics, the only two currencies that count in politics are money and votes. And votes trumps money. That was a pun. <laughs> votes trumps money. Going to Congress, or going to the state legislature and saying we have 12 million members versus 6 million is a game changer. We have to engage, we have to develop, we have to talk to people who are outside the comfort zone of dealing with guns. We wanted, I saw a video the other day and they were doing gun yoga. Have you seen that video? <laughs> yeah. Google gun yoga. Yeah. Yeah. And these ladies had these, you know, these uh, ARs and they're like, doing yoga, that's great, <laughs> right? They're comfortable, people are comfortable. We're being labeled, right? I, I used to be a, 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 a PB football coach in Belleville, Texas. My son played, I don't know, football in Belleville, Texas is a religion, by the way, right? So we won the Super Bowl, by the way, just for the record. But, you know, I guess uh, no college coach called me, so I didn't get a job, so. But I used to tell, they used to whine about playing, and they used to get hurt. And they would get hurt, and the coach, coach, my legs broke. Coach, coach, I'm having a heart attack. Coach, coach, I'm hurt, because they wanted to come out of the game. And there was one game, we didn't have many reserves. And I grabbed their little shoulder blades. This one coach, boy came in, he goes, coach, I'm hurt. I needed them in the game. And I said, son, I grabbed his shoulder blades. I said, son, I said, I'm going to put you back in that game. And two things are going to happen, son. Either you're going to hit somebody, or somebody's going to hit you. That's it, right? Politics, there's only two things are going to happen. Either you're going to affect politics or politics is going to affect you. That's it. There is no third choice. We have to be engaged. We have to be proactive. We have to take on the, the future, which is the population. I love this idea that every one of our rallies should look like our grocery store. Because we're right. The ability to defend yourself is inherent to every individual. We just have to explain it. We have to engage it. They have to see something different than what CNBC puts on there, right? CNN, all those other. We have to show them something different, right? And if we don't, if we fail to do that, we will be late. We will be hit. If we don't hit first, we will get hit. And it's our job. It's our job. The last thing I'll tell you is, uh, we. Uh, with the NRA, we, uh, we had a, by the way, again, these are, I'm not a spokesman for the NRA. These are my opinions, not theirs, they're official. But when I go up there, we have our court, we have our meetings up there in DC. And it shocks me every time because we have such an all-star cast on our, our, our cast on our engagement. We have Sheriff Clark. Y'all know who Sheriff Clark is, right? Right? Amazing man. Colonel Allen West. Now I know I know Colonel Allen West. By the way, one of the best speakers, I, I mean, man, never, I had to follow him one time, that was the worst mistake <laughs> I ever made. Oh, great speaker, tremendous speaker, right? We got Wills Lee, Lieutenant Colonel, right, who's on our, who chairs our committee. We've got Mark Roberts. Do you remember the video of the guy in South Carolina saying, I am the majority, huge black man, you remember that? He goes, I, he's now in the engagement committee with us, right? Now you tell me, do you think MSNBC, CNN wants our faces to be the picture of the NRA? Do you think that at all? No. They want some other picture that is going to typify their optics. We need to change that. It's our job. And I realize the responsibility that lays on me. I just want to tell you one last thing is that um, I came here today uh, after doing the, the church service and the uh, I'm going to go work the cows and Don is done. I mean, where's Don? Don, where you at? Don? Everybody give applause for Don. <laughs> Don, was, Don, you were about six foot tall when we started this, right? Six four. You were six four and it grinded you down, right? He would call me and he had this tone in my, his voice, right? And I said, Don, I said, it's going to be all right. You're going to be all right. It's going to be fine, right? God does work in small numbers. But 
I want to applaud you guys for showing up. I know there's so many things that we can do. The fight is real, but more so, and I tell people this, and I've given speeches, people think this is a political battle. I'm a man of faith. I don't do anything without my faith. This is a spiritual battle. We are fighting the spiritual warfare. Right? And the fruit of the Spirit is gentleness, kindness, meekness. We can stand strong in our Second Amendment and still exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. Right? That's such a pivotal part. That perfume, that aroma of the fruit of the Spirit will attract those people. Right? The ability for me to be able to invite these Youth for Christ kids out to my ranch and teach them about guns and gun safety. I mean, think about this. They, they thought I was crazy. I talked to actually the mayor of Houston, Sylvester Turner, because he asked me what was going on. But you know he's not a pro-gun guy, right? Right? So he goes, what do you do? I said, I'm bringing them out. What do you do? I said, we're going to love on them. We're going to talk about the word. But we're also going to talk about guns. He goes, you're going to take these felons and talk about guns. I said, yeah. The problem why they're probably felons is nobody ever talks to them about guns. Nobody's poured into them. Nobody's fathered these kids. Nobody's fathered these kids. We should do that. You want to move the needle on the Second Amendment? Let's go father some for kids that have been disenfranchised. Let's take them honey. Let's put a 22 rifle in front of them and let them just go target shooting. That's how we change. That's what we do. That's The change will always come. Deciding to make that move. And I applaud you for being here today. I applaud Don, who used to be six foot tall, who's now that tall, for worrying and making this thing happen. But I applaud the God, gracious God who gave us the opportunity to serve Him here and glorify Him. Because that's that's why I show up. That's the only reason I show up. So God bless you guys. God bless all that you do that we don't know about. But understand that your Heavenly Father does. And it's going to make a difference. So have a great day.